My name is uh, Roger Bilbul. Uh, I was born in Alexandria on the 31st of August, 1940. This is a picture of uh, my family. And on the left, you have my uh, uh, father. Then uh, uh, standing behind is my older brother. In front of him, my yo my <coughs> his younger brother, and then me, who's the baby then my mother, my sister, and behind my sister, a cousin, I believe. And this was taken in Alexandria, and it must have been taken in 1943, when I was three, or I may have been younger. Uh, both my mother and father uh, are originally from Iraq. Uh, my father came to Alexandria with his father and two sisters. Uh, his mother was uh, passed away by then. She died when he was only six months old. And uh, they came to Alexandria having spent uh, maybe two or three months traveling from Iraq. It was all done in caravans on uh, uh, coaches driven by horses or uh, camels. Uh, they were always, according to what I remember, afraid of being uh, attacked by robbers on the way, and they would spend time in Beirut. They passed by Jerusalem where they spent time, and eventually they reached Alexandria. In the case of my mother, her parents were from Kirkuk, and uh, I think it was the Kurdistan part of uh, Iraq and they left I think my grandfather left first uh, and they left before my father arrived in Alexandria and my grandmother with three three children followed him uh, through Beirut through Jerusalem and eventually settled in Alexandria there wasn't such a thing as a Jewish area at the time. Uh, Jews were spread a bit everywhere. Uh, and uh, they may, there may have been a Jewish ghetto a long time ago, i.e. hundreds of years ago. But uh, as far as I remember, and unlike Cairo, there isn't a so-called Jewish quarter. People lived uh, around, almost everywhere in Alexandria. I was sent to a school where it's a kind of a contradiction in terms, it was a secular Jewish school, okay? Uh, although that there were Jewish schools which were religious Jewish schools, uh, we all aspired to European culture and education uh, because people of a European culture and education uh, got on better in an environment that uh, was controlled by th the European powers, England and France. Well, it was an incredibly cosmopolitan environment. Uh, and, uh, y you know, where we live, we would have uh, Muslim neighbors, Greek neighbors, Italian neighbors, uh, Jewish neighbors, and we were all aware of each other's rituals. I remember at the end of Pesach, that was a, a very big thing where Muslims who worked for my father would come and bring the bread and uh, special fish, I don't know why fish, uh, to celebrate the end of Pesach. Well, the, the, the main synagogue in Alexandria was uh, the synagogue on uh, Nebi Daniel Street, Eliyahu Anabi, which is probably the biggest synagogue in the Middle East. It's a beautiful synagogue. Uh, and it is the one remaining synagogue that uh, is part of uh, the Ministry of Antiquities. Uh, two things that are really uh, come to mind. I have an aunt who lived right across the street from the synagogue. 
And I remember it was uh, Yom Kippur, and I forget how old I was, and it was probably the first time I fasted the whole day. And there I was on the balcony. I wasn't in the synagogue, but I remember being on the balcony and waiting for everybody to come out to know that it was the end of the fast. And uh, uh, this feeling uh, of uh, those hordes of people coming out of the synagogue and seeing them all from above is made quite an impression on me. The other thing is whenever I went with my father, and it wasn't very often, and he would uh, put the talit over my head uh, was a very uh, emotional thing that one still remember. At the time, as a kid, you know, you didn't care. You ran around. You wanted to be with your friends, and you. Uh, but as a memory, it it really touches one heart. Uh, I remember uh, in 1948 we had to eliminate all traces of our Zionist associations. Uh, I remember my father going into the attic and uh, uh, bringing out the Israeli flag that we actually cut up and throw in the dustbin so that there is no evidence of our uh, Zionist associations. After 1956, things changed dramatically. And uh, our uh, ritual and ob Jewish observance uh, declined enormously because one, we were much less in numbers, and two, uh, we had to almost uh, hide the fact that uh, we were Jewish. It's a very difficult situation to be in an environment where you have uh, dual allegiance. Uh, our, you know, what made it easy uh, to have uh, an undivided allegiance for uh, Jews and the Jewish movement was the fact that we were totally rejected by the Egyptians. So it's a kind of a chicken and egg. If the country where you are born and where you are part of and you're part of that society tells you you are not one of us, you are not part of us. Uh, because, you know, sometimes Egyptians ask you, how did you feel in terms of your allegiance to the country where you were born? The implication being, uh, you know, you are born a traitor, and as such, you never felt for the country. And I like to turn the tables around and say, you rejected me from the minute I was born, so what do you expect me to do if you don't want me? Well, it was a very sad period because all your friends I mean, it, all the conversations with all your friends, when are you leaving, where are you going, uh, how are you going to do it, when are you this, and every day some friend would tell you, oh, well, we're leaving next week, we're leaving the week after. Uh, things were rather discreet and done uh, uh, in a way, in, in a whispering, oh, yeah, we're leaving, uh, things are bad, uh, we have uh, an uncle in France that we're going to join, we have an uncle here. A lot of the people among us in Alexandria didn't choose to go to Israel. They were kind of uh, wanted to leave that kind of environment. Going to Israel at the time meant remaining in the same kind of turmoil that they were trying to avoid. So a lot of my friends, a lot of my relatives, uh, with the exception of a few, chose not to go to Israel after 1956. Those that went to Israel, the majority went before 1956. I feel Jewish from a tribal point of view. This is my tribe, as opposed to uh, I believe in the Jewish God. Uh, uh, so probably that's uh, my first uh, recognition of who I am. Uh, secondly is the Western cultural environment. I've adapted to Western society and I feel very comfortable here. I feel comfortable when I'm in France. I feel comfortable when I'm in America and uh, I know how to relate to the environment and the people. The thing that does concern me and I feel very uh, sad about is that since 1947, 
uh, the Egyptian public has been totally brainwashed in an anti-Jewish, anti-Israel frame of mind. And although 99.9% .9 of the Egyptians today haven't met a Jew in their life, they have a picture which is a horrible distortion of what a Jew is and what the Judaism is. And it's been years of brainwashing that had reached that thing. During the Mubarak regime, during these last few demonstrations, the public is more anti-Israeli than the government is. And it is all due to this hatred that has been really inculcated into their brains for year after year after year. You very often see a lot of examples of anti-Semitic publications, all the horrible things that uh, uh, were common in uh, the Nazi era. You see them in Egypt today. They are accepted, they are tolerated. And uh, this is what I find incredibly sad. Thank you.